Howdy folks, Steampunk Desperado here. This week we have another review. And this is due to a suggestion made by a viewer. This person didn't suggest this specific work, but rather in, expressed an interest in the Meiji Restoration historical era in Japan. This is the Japanese Age of Steam. It's when they went from being ruled by uh, Shogun and Daimyo and Samurai to the modern state with the emperor at its head. And this was the Meiji era, hence the name. So I've been reading a couple books about this and I intend to do a video on this historical period, but I was also looking into anime from that time. No, this is a more obscure one and it appeared in spring 2020 and it's more historical and you know, there's no demons or vampires or anything in it. It is called Woodpecker Detective's Office. Now, most anime come from a manga, <laughs> and in this case, no, it's a novel. Woodpecker Detective's Office was a novel written in 1999 by K. Lee. But this is a historical novel, it's a mystery, and it's about a group of young uh, Japanese writers living in Tokyo. They all live in this boarding house, and they end up actually forming an amateur detective agency and solving mysteries. So the anime television series, just one season, and directed by Shinpei Izaki and Tomoe Makino, written, that is the screenplay, by Taku Kishimoto, and the studio is Leiden Films. I wanted to read the novel, but there is no English translation that I know of, so I was really confused about a lot of what was going on, because... You know, there was some backstory I just didn't know. Like, where did the name Woodpecker come from? Why did they pick that name? As I noted, the protagonists are all writers. So this is like an amateur sleuthing thing. I don't think they mentioned Sherlock Holmes, but it's around the time when they could have read that series. And I don't want to give any spoilers, but by the standards of Western mysteries, some of these ones are a little weird. You know, the situations are odd and the solutions are odder still. But maybe it's just because of Japanese culture. The first episode itself is a bit of a spoiler because Kindaichi, he's the first protagonist. He's a respectable 30-ish man in a Western business suit. He's got his little thin mustache and he looks very professional. He's going to visit this boarding house where he once lived as a younger man back in his 20s. And he's reminiscing about his dear friend, now deceased, his friend Ishikawa. And he was a fellow boarder at this house. And he refers to him as his lying freeloading friend. I don't know if those are the exact words, but yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of a weird thing to say about your friend. So we soon find out the actual truth. We return to the past, uh, which by the clothing and the technology is definitely Meiji era. And it's sometime around the early 19 aughts. Uh, there we meet a younger Kendaichi without the mustache, but he's still wearing his Western suits. Our first look at Ishikawa is when he knocks on the door of Kendaichi's room to bum a cigarette. And yeah, he is always bumming something, usually money. And uh, despite Kendaichi's frustration with his friend not being able to pay this stuff back, he is fond of the guy. Because he's charming, he's fun, and he's a very talented poet. And his style is called tanka, which is much like a haiku, but a little longer. The other young men, they are all writers of one sort or another. And they're, they get together often at this one restaurant where they drink milk in the morning. And sake at night. <laughs> and milk. I thought that was foreign to Japanese culture, but maybe that was just introduced by the Western ideas, huh? Anyway. Anyway, uh, they're always scolding him, saying, you know, you're enabling Ishikawa's really irresponsible behavior. But he keeps saying, well, he's my friend and he's a genius. He'll be famous someday with his great poetry. But the most egregious thing is what Ishikawa spends his money on, which is nights of drinking and carousing and frequently going to brothels. In fact, he always wants the straight-laced Kendaichi to come to Asakusa, the entertainment district, <laughs> uh, 
to visit his favorite house of ill repute and uh, says, you know, you're going to die a virgin. When, when Kandaichi finally agrees to come along with him, they encounter the first of the mysteries. A brothel patron has been murdered and another man is seen running out. So, you know, they call the police and the police investigate and they say, well, obviously it was the guy that they saw running out. Well, actually Ishikawa is looking at the murder scene and he's very observant. He's, he's picking up on all these clues that the police didn't see. And, and uh, Kandaichi says, well, you're really, uh, you're really talented at this. Perhaps you should become a detective. And Ishikawa says, yes, perhaps I could earn some money and not be broke all the time. So, Thus is born the Woodpecker Detective's Office. In the 12 episodes of this series, they encounter several mysteries, mostly murders or apparent murders because they're mysterious deaths, and also kidnappings. And they solve most of them, though there's this underlying conspiracy that we seem to seem to be uh, pursuing. Ishikawa earns some money from these jobs, but he's always spending it. He's often treating other people to meals, and he still doesn't have enough money for rent. He has to uh, confront this poor maid, uh, Keo-san. She's only a teenager. And I guess in Japan, you know, the maids had like management responsibilities at these boarding houses. And she, she says, where's the rent? I don't have it. I'll have it next week. And so Kendaichi always ends up paying it. And you'd think you would hate this guy, but he's he's kind of like, kind of like a child. He's charming and he's, and he's actually good spirited and, and fun, you know. But he's also not well. You see him coughing all the time. And he coughs into his handkerchief and there's blood stains. And you think, uh-oh, this means consumption, tuberculosis. Poor Ishikawa is doomed. Now, one thing that's very interesting and specific to this time, besides the idea of tuberculosis being a problem, is the mixture of Western and traditional dress. Kendaichi wears a suit. And some of the other characters do. Whereas Ishikawa wears traditional hakama, you know, those wide pants that go with kind of kimono-like top. Uh, and the women pretty much all wear the kimono, although there is at least one character who wears a very elegant, long, western dress. So the other men that they all socialize with, uh, some of them dress western, some of them dress traditionally. And they sometimes have storylines of their own, like when they are trying to win the love of this beautiful waitress at their favorite restaurant, these guys are having a poetry contest to try to charm her. At other times, they are goaded into helping Ishikawa on his investigations, even though he still owes them money. <laughs> so he can't obviously pay them anything. They complain about him all the time, but at some level, they seem to like him, or at least tolerate him. Now, the character quirks are what make this show so special much more so than the mysteries, in my view. And the interplay quickly becomes as familiar and endearing as like an old-school American sitcom. And there's the impending doom. You know, how fast is Ishikawa going downhill? Sometimes he's at death's door, but then he recovers. But he won't take care of himself. He goes out drinking all night, or he's out on a case and uh, to all hours. And... He runs after a suspect in the pouring rain and catches his death of cold. And, and Kendaichi is not only sick of this kind of behavior, but the fact that he is ha behaving selfishly in other ways. And he says, I'm done with you. I renounce you as a friend, blah, blah, blah. Well, can he really do that? Or is he just too attached? When the story was, was done, I was sad. I wanted to see more. And although it doesn't end very specifically you know that, you know, Ishikawa can't last much longer. And I was wondering, what's the story behind this? I can't read the novel. It's in Japanese. There's no translation. But I found an article on a site called Wayfair Dave's Travel and History Blog, uh, done by David Krigbaum. I assume he travels and writes about it, and it makes me very jealous. What really surprised me was the fact that Kendaichi Ishikawa and all these other writer characters, they're all real historical people. In fact, Kendaichi and Ishikawa knew each other, and they were friends. And they actually looked a lot like the anime depictions. I should note that the mysteries themselves are fictitious, though they do involve issues that were current at the time in Japan, such as corruption and pollution from copper mines. All the female characters, such as Kaiosan, were invented. 
And I don't believe that all of those writers lived at the same place or socialized at the same restaurant. Still, it's a very steampunk concept to feature real historical people in fictional stories. Now, the title, Woodpecker Detective's Office, now that comes from a play on Ishikawa's first name, which is Takaboku, and which is, I guess, the Chinese word for woodpecker, according to David Krigbaum, anyway. In Japan, the word for woodpecker is Kitsutsuki, so the Japanese title for the series is Kitsutsuki Tante de Koro. Now, there's a book at the end called Sad Toys, which was a volume, posthumous publication of Ishikawa's poetry. And that's real. That happened. And you can get it on Amazon. I got a copy. Kendaichi was a famous linguist who was an expert on the Ainu language. They were the Aboriginal people of northern Japan. And he compiled a lot of their folk tales, and he wrote a dictionary, which is still used today. Ishikawa was indeed a celebrated poet. Uh, he died young from tuberculosis at the age of 26. Very sad. And uh, whereas Kandaichi lived to be almost 90. The other writers include several very noted Japanese writers, playwrights, uh, critics, and so on. I'm not going to go into them all because you wouldn't know them. But, for example... Uh, there was uh, Kodo Nomura, a novelist and music critic, very well known. Uh, Ryunosaki Akutagawa, who was called the father of the Japanese short story. And this one, some of you will have heard of. Taro Hirai, better known by his pen name, Edogawa Ranpo. Yeah, they've adapted a lot of his stories in, in anime form. So you've probably heard of him. The settings are real. The boarding house really existed. And, and I believe Ishikawa really lived there. A lot of it's based on his diary. And they show real places in Ak Asakusa, including Japan's first skyscraper, which is always in the background, called Ryonkaku. And it was wrecked by an earthquake in 1923. So this has been my review of Woodpecker Detective's Office. It's available on Crunchyroll, Funimation, and some other sites that I probably shouldn't mention. <laughs> uh, please let me know what you think about this in the comments. Uh, please like and subscribe. Also check out my works on Amazon. I'll have the links in the description as always. I'll also put a link in to that Wayfarer Dave's article so you can get the skinny on that yourself. For now, this is Steampunk Dust Road. I was saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Dust Road channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Mm -hmm.